So as I'm sharing this with you today, I want you to think about it a couple of ways. First, if you support a new teacher or help a new teacher, I want you to think about how they would view these tools that I'm sharing today. And if you were a new teacher at some point in your life, which all of you might have been, I want you to think, how would I have looked at these tools when I was a new teacher? So thank you so much for being here. So that's a little bit about me. And I am a former school principal, so I tend to look at things from the lens of a principal, which is a very eagle's eye view. So forgive me if I sometimes speak in that way, but that's my view often. And as the founder of New Teacher Chat, I want to share with you quickly that I am rebooting the chat after closing it out in 2017. So again, if you support new teachers, work with new teachers, look for that hashtag to become very, very active again in a monthly chat in August, okay? It still is active, but there is no active chat or live chat, but it will get active again in August. So as we're looking at these tools, I want you to think about your own process. How are you using your apps? How are you using your software? Is it time to try something new, right? And as your school is looking at things, are you a school leader as I was? Do you have teachers coming to you to say, this just isn't working? And are you willing to listen? And if you're a teacher, are you using your teacher voice to say, this is unacceptable. I need better broadband. I need things to be faster. My teachers would come to me all the time and say, Lisa, this just doesn't work. And rather than send them away with, well, we don't have funding, I tried to look at creative uh, ways that I could do things for them to support them, okay? So is it time for you to reboot as well? So let's look at five newish tools, and one of them, one of them has a new launch today, so I'm really excited about that, and it's the last tool I'm sharing, okay? So Flipgrid, how many of you have used Flipgrid before? Okay, what do you like about it? What, Carla, what do you like about it? Uh, just to give reflections. Okay. So Carla likes the fact that you can give student reflections and you can do that easily in video format and you can kind of keep it as a wall garden if you want, right? Because there's a code involved. Anybody else want to share how they use it? Tell me your name. Oh, that's awesome. So tell me your name. So Penny uses it in a debate forum. So students can debate each other in Flipgrid. That I have never heard. I think that's really exciting. So I want to share with you a little bit about Flipgrid, unless everybody feels like they really know how it works. Are you pretty comfortable with it? Yes, no, okay. But check it out. There's so many ways to use it. And you know, Microsoft just bought Flipgrid. So we're hoping it doesn't change too much. But in the long run, it's really an amazing tool. Insert Learning turns a website into an interactive lesson. And as Kathleen was sharing, you're able to insert questions right onto the web with the Chrome extension. Go to the link, it's gonna show you a YouTube video where it actually walks you through how you use it, all right? Next tool is AutoDraw. AutoDraw is super fun. It works on iPad, web, or your phone. And what I really love about it is that if you have students who are interested in drawing and they're very creative and they want to get a start, even little kids can use AutoDraw because it uses an AI that will actually guess what they think you're wanting to draw from a pizza to a cat to a dog to a rabbit. So I want you to think about using AutoDraw and think about the possibilities with the kinds of things you're doing with your students. Okay. Museum Ed, anybody heard about Museum? Okay, Museum is amazing because it really puts a stop to fake news. When you go to Museum Ed, there are lessons that are pre-prepared. There is actual factual content that you can use to support your students and it's absolutely amazing. It's a favorite, especially with social studies teachers, no kidding, history teachers. So I want you to check out Museum Ed, okay? And the last one, which just got a new launch, is Book Creator. How many have already used Book Creator? Okay, you're gonna be really excited now because Book Creator has launched new features that actually allow you to do embedding where heretofore you couldn't. So I want you to go check out Book Creator. The new launch just came out today and it's going to be something you're absolutely gonna love. Now. Along with that, anybody ever use Storybird? Okay, 
Storybird is different from Book Creator in that with Book Creator you can insert your own images. Storybird has artists images that are already there. Same idea, create stories and it's absolutely beautiful. So Book Creator. So most important as Alice, Christine and Matt and I share at the booth is we want to make sure that our children are not passively receiving information that they're actively involved, actively engaged. How well are you doing that? What's your measure of that? If you need to improve it, I want to challenge you to do that as you leave ISTE. And where are you? Are you at the top? My dad used to carry a big, ginormous video camera around. <laughs> right? Okay. We don't need to do that anymore. We have that at the bottom. However, as I've toured on the ISTE Ladies Road Trip, I am a woman of a certain age, and I've heard a lot of people say, I'm too old. I can't, oh, thank you. I can't do this. And I say, no, you're never too old to learn something new. I want you to learn how to use the tools, then teach it to your students, and then let them fly. Are we in agreement? All right, thank you. And then here's the tools we talked about today quickly. And they're actually inspired by a blog post I saw by at Cult of Pedagogy. Jennifer's amazing. So if you check out Jen's blog, you can read a little bit deeper also about the tools. And I want to thank you for coming.